it was great to finally find a place where I belong. I am neurodiverse, and my previous work hadn't enabled me to make the most of my strengths or who I am. My first day at Australian Spatial Analytics was different. I was apprehensive, but as I spoke to people and saw the work firsthand, I learnt on the job really quickly. I now use mapping and analytics software for asset management and navigation. This work gels really well with my skills and interests in computer technology. I am super happy that I found these guys, and my perspective on what a career can be has changed. Everyone is valued, and everyone gets individual attention and training. It's a relaxed environment, and I love coming to work. Their focus is people and well-being. I would consider my colleagues my friends. I hope they're cool with that. We connect on different levels and help each other out. ASA has given me stability and a better future and feel empowered and appreciated. I've gone from wondering where I would be in a few years to being happy with where I am right now. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, my name's Seath. I'm a People Success Officer here at ASA, based in the Brisbane office. And uh, yeah, we really appreciate you joining us uh, to find out a little bit more about what we do and about the careers that we have available. So uh, a few housekeeping things just to get started. Uh, the format of this morning is we'll have a number of uh, short presentations um, and they should go for a roundabout. 30 minutes or so and then we'll have the opportunity for some question time after that now if you want to ask a question this morning um, i'd ask that you uh, click on the link that you would have been emailed this morning uh, otherwise the qr code that's on the screen there so you can ask questions anonymously or you can put uh, your name to it so we'll try to get to as many of those as we can uh, as we go through if you can keep yourself on uh, mute uh, as we go through um, that would be fantastic as well. So I just want to start uh, by uh, acknowledging the traditional owners on the land uh, which we meet today. For us in Brisbane, uh, we're at North Quay. It's the lands of the Turrbal and Yagura people. So we pay our respects to Elders past, present and emerging, uh, both here and wherever you're joining us from this morning. So as I said, our agenda for this morning, we're going to go through a little bit about uh, what Australian Spatial Analytics does, who we are. Uh, we're going to have a couple of our lead data analysts share about a couple of our projects to give you an idea of the project work that we do. We'll then talk about our recruitment pathways and how you can prepare yourself or uh, your job seekers or your children for work here at ASA. We'll talk about work experience opportunities and, and then, as I said, the question and answer time. So I'm going to hand over now to Sam, our Chief People Officer, who's going to tell you a little bit about us as an organisation. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining. And uh, it's a very exciting week being Disability Action Week. Um, and very much ASA employs over 120 individuals and 80% identify as neurodivergent. So we very much see, um, you know, disability in action. And it's, it's something that um, we, you know, we're all here together every day. It's not something we discuss. We don't discuss each other's neurodivergency. We just get on with our work and have a great time. Um, so just briefly about myself, the two most important things you probably should know is that I'm pretty good at Mario Kart 64 um, on the Nintendo, and I do enjoy rock climbing. Uh, so they're the most important things to know. And if you do end up working at ASA, I will certainly challenge you to a game. If we go to the next slide. Uh, this talks about why ASA exists. And as you can see there, we were set up to create jobs for neurodivergent individuals who've experienced barriers to employment. That may be getting through a recruitment or an interview and never being able to get that first job. Or there are many individuals we employ who are working, but are working in jobs that um, may not have been their preference, may have been a real challenge. 
um, or, or not really giving an opportunity for people to reach their potential. Several of our teams worked in warehousing or cafes, which just really wasn't aligned with either interest um, or, or was a challenge because of, of sensory needs. And so, you know, we wanted to provide opportunities in technology. And so that's why ASA was set up. Um, now, some people may ask, why are we explaining uh, neurodiversity? Um, appreciate that not everyone on the call may be familiar with uh, the spectrum that it entails. Um, so neurodiversity um, encompasses um, a wide variety of uh, conditions or diagnoses, including autism. Um, that's a condition that affects how people think, feel, interact with others and how they experience their environment. The most important thing we all recognize as a team is that um, every autistic person is different um, to each other. That's why it's called a spectrum. We also have ADHD, um, you can see there, um, and that's around people may experience difficulties in organizing or finishing tasks at times. They may also experience trouble paying attention or controlling impulsive behaviors. And again, that happens on a spectrum. Um, everyone is, is different. We also have a few others there, dyslexia, um, which people may experience difficulty in learning, reading or spelling. Um, we have several people on the team also with dysgraphia, uh, which impacts the act of writing. Um, dyspraxia, uh, where people are challenged around perception, perception, language, thought or memory. And also um, some people on the team with dyscalculia, which is impacting um, maths or processing mathematical concepts. And I hope what you, you take from this, if, if it's not familiar already, is that, you know, neurodiversity, it's a broad term. It encompasses several different conditions or diagnoses. Um, and several of our team identify as having these conditions or diagnoses. This is something, um, you know, we're a very diverse team. Um, this is not weird. This is our normal. And I hope um, that makes you feel like you're in good company today. Um, you're very much welcome on this call. Uh, Australian Spatial Analytics, we were founded only three years ago. Uh, we're the largest and fastest growing work integrated social enterprise. What that means is we tackle a social problem being unemployment um, and we also trade as a business because we undertake data analytics services and the money we make goes back into the business. We are based in Brisbane, Cairns, Melbourne and we've just opened our Adelaide office and the most important thing I wanted to recognize is that we pay full award wages because the work we do is real world work. I'll show you some of our clients soon. And so very much you deserve to be paid at award wage. The stats are that we currently employ 120 individuals, 80% identify as neurodivergent, 70% first job, you can see there how many of our team have been long-term unemployed. That means they've been unemployed for over two years. Um, several of the team members have converted to permanent part-time and full-time. We all individuals start as casual to allow flexibility around appointments and other commitments, but we do intend if people wish to transition them to permanency. Our average working hours are 28. That does not mean everyone works 28, um, but that's the average. And we've noted there that seven people have decided um, to give up their disability support pension so that they could work more hours. This is not a requirement, um, but something that we recognize. Um, and, and that's from these individuals, you know, seeking more independence and I guess feeling um, empowered by undertaking the work. Um, so I've, I've been with the organization two and a half years um, and seen the company grow from 15 to 120 um, individuals. So I feel very privileged and um, look forward to um, hearing from several of you over questions. Um, the next slide is around um, the autistic strengths, um, which we recognize many in autistic individuals have. You can see them there. And what we've looked to do is the work we um, provide for the team aligns with these strengths. And that's why I think ASA has done so well, because we're fitting the job to match you as opposed to 
putting you in something that really doesn't suit. Um, so if, you, you know, you don't have to have all these um, strengths, but if you do have several, that might mean that you're really well set to undertake the kind of work that ASA does. And Lily and Keaton will share more about that very shortly. The last um, slide for me in this section is just some of our clients. If these are not familiar with to you, that's okay. Um, but you'll see there Brisbane City Council, New South Wales government, the federal government, um, AgriWeb on the right-hand side. So we digitize their farm maps uh, for them. And we also have several construction companies there because the team undertake um, design work on, on construction plans. So this is just to demonstrate that the work our team undertakes, it's real world, it's meaningful, it's work that other companies undertake as well. Um, and we find that this gives a lot of satisfaction um, to our team and provides you with some real world skills that you can develop at ASA or take elsewhere um, when and if you choose to move on. And I'll hand it over to Lily to talk about one of our projects. Hi all, um, I'm, I'm Lily and I'm going to be talking to you today about the Enzyme project. We can go to the, the next slide, yeah. Okay, I know that this is a lot of text. Um, let me break it down for you. So the Enzen project is actually about the electrical network of Queensland. So Enzen are a multinational data processing company and they specialize in utilities management services. Um, Enzen approached ASA to help complete their uh, work for Energy Queensland. So Energy Queensland is the merge of uh, Ergon Energy, which is regional Queensland. If you don't live in Southeast Queensland, that's who supplies your power. And uh, Energex, which is Southeast Queensland. So they supply power to uh, the Gold Coast, Sunshine Coast, Brisbane, um, out Ipswich Way. Um, I think as far, about as far as Br uh, the Gatton area, but bear with me. Um, so to facilitate this merge, they needed a map they needed a really, really big map uh, of all of their assets. Um, and part of that map looks kind of like the image that I've got uh, just on the right there. Um, this is a tiny snippet of my hometown. Um, and it shows a whole bunch of poles, pillars and electric lines that our team model. So I've heard some of my team describe it as like playing a giant game of connect the dots. Um, but we do this uh, for Energy Queensland every day. We have a very large team on this project and this is actually a 3D model. So uh, we can pop into a 3D view and actually see this in, in three dimensions, which is really cool. Um, and all of this work that we do uh, for Energy Queensland affects the real world. So this is their database. This is where they're going to go to when they want to know what's out in the real world, what their field techs are going to see um, when we're doing things like storm recovery, after floods, um, also for solar integration. It's really, really important that they know what features and assets are where in the electrical network um, so that they can actually better support that solar feed in, um, which is something that they're really looking to develop at the moment. It's really, really cool work. Um, and it's it's been almost two years on this project. Um, so it's very, very exciting. We can go to the next slide. So the key skills that we look for um, on the NZN project, things that we would look for um, to, to sort of build from are attention to detail and pattern recognition. Um, every single person on the NZN project has come in with no knowledge of, of GIS or um, what geographical information systems are, um, what mapping software is, anything like that. Um, most of them, the most experience that they've had is Google Maps, um, which I think most people have, have used. Um, you know, you type in your address or wherever you want to go and it leads you somewhere. That is definitely a GIS space. Um, and if that's that's all you got, that is totally okay. 
we do all of our training from the ground up and this includes um, some soft skills training as well. So what we will help you grow or what we can help you grow on projects like the Enzen project, um, technical and social communication, collaboration and teamwork, problem solving and troubleshooting, multitasking, record keeping, reading comprehension and other learning related skills, uh, memory, software navigation and analysis and time tracking. Um, all of these are things that the analysts have picked up just by being on the project. We tailor all of our training to the analysts. So we'll do some broader training um, in, in group settings or in workshops, and then we can actually go as far down uh, the rabbit hole of, of making checklists and, and other adapted um, training materials for every individual analyst. Um, it's why we have our, our leads like myself and Keaton. Um, we work with you to make sure that the, the project material is digestible. Um, this is some of the most, uh, the Enzyme project is some of the most complex data of this type that you will really ever work with um, in a GIS professional's career. And I don't say that to scare you. I'm saying that to say, we have got a team of currently 46 individuals who do this on the daily. And if they can do it, anybody can. So if we can go to the next slide, please. I'll finish off with some fun facts. Um, so the Enzyme project has involved almost 70 analysts over the course of the project. Like I said earlier, it's been going for almost two years now, which is crazy to think. Um, and every analyst has been trained on the job. Uh, to date, we have completed uh, roughly 17,500 tasks and about 66,750 sites. So by sites, I mean each individual pole, pillar, intersection, all of that. We have touched 66,000 or so of them in the electrical network in that database. And we've updated the data. We've built from scratch these sites. We've connected up new sites to existing network, we've um, fixed errors, we do all kinds of things in this database and it's so cool to see. We are an uh, award-winning project. Uh, we recently won the Geospatial Council of Australia Technical Excellence Award and this is actually a really prestigious award. It has a, a really high competition uh, for it um, and we came away with it, which is really, really cool. Um, and then as the biggest project at ASA, by which I mean we have the most people. Um, if you come into the Brisbane office, there's a good chunk of us that are all on NZEN, um, but we have a, a really good culture. Um, there are a couple more leads on the project, not just myself, um, and we all work together. Um, we, we all work together to make sure that um, our, our whole team is feeling happy and comfortable and working with you. Um, yeah, on the project. And then this is a really fun one about the project space itself. This is actually the largest project of its kind in the world. There is no other GIS space like the one that we're creating on the NZEN project. Um, this is used as a case study uh, at the um, software company that designs the software that we're using. Um, we get to work with the client really closely um, to make sure that their system remains happy and healthy. Um, yeah, it's it's just, it's a really, really cool thing about the project is this is absolutely um, sort of groundbreaking kind of work. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you so much. Lily for uh, that overview. I'm going to hand over to another one of our lead data analysts now, Keaton, who is going to talk to us uh, for a few minutes about our Ventia project. Over to you. How are we doing guys? Uh, I'm Keaton. Uh, I currently lead the Queensland Ventia project. We'll go to the next slide. So we work for a company called Ventia. Uh, they do a broad spectrum of things, but the category we under is the fiber technician design, which works very closely with the work MBN does. 
we assist Ventio with the delivery of the MBN on-demand services. So we complete jobs that they assign us and give it back to them in a presentable sort of marked up manner, which also in the slide just after. Um, sorry. Uh, can we go back one slide? Yeah, sorry. I worded it wrongly. Um, we have been doing this contract since April two, uh, two, 2021 um, and have so far grown it from about three people to uh, we're currently sitting at about 16. Um, we conduct uh, as constructed work. So our most of our job revolves around just after construction. We do the finalization of jobs, which means we work with a lot of numbers and a lot of design. Go to the next page. So our job is to take on the left, we have uh, what we call a red line. It is basically a design markup of how they did the job in the field. So they went out there and then they saw a few things and then they built it and maybe they built it a little bit differently. Our job is to make sure it matches according to what they've specified. So it turns out on the right is the after. That's after we've completed it. That's the markup. And that shows all the changes and the finalized design of the Ventio. So with working with Ventio, uh, when I started, uh, I had no prior knowledge on how to do these tasks. I started coming from a retail job. And ASA has helped me so far develop all the skills needed to get to a point where I feel very comfortable working on systems that look very complex. Um, I've developed skills like CAD drafting, which is on the left, working with design systems, uh, management skills, to a point where I can lead a team now. Uh, we quite often work with deadlines. We do train from the ground up when it comes to fiber knowledge. So there's no prior knowledge needed to come in here. We would happily train anyone. And my team very much revolves around teamwork, collaboration. Uh, if you don't have the knowledge, someone in the team does. And we always want to share the team between, uh, share the knowledge between the team. So far, not as much as Enzan, unfortunately. We've only completed about 2,000 work orders, but that's with a team of about 16 people. We, uh, so we currently have 16, but we've had about 20 over the few years of the project. We create valuable and high demand skills uh, for any company looking to do telecommunications. And we've actually had multiple members of our team transition into uh, similar fields, uh, PowerLink, uh, Telstra, and go from there. And we're always looking to take more people on and train. Just to say there. Thank you for listening. Outstanding. Thanks so much, Keaton. We're just going to watch a quick video now um, that just tells you a bit more about our Ventia project. ASA has been working with Ventia for a couple of years now. Started off with a fairly small project uh, around the NBN, and that's since expanded out probably two or three different industries that Ventia are across as well. Uh, we started the Melbourne office about 12 months ago and grew from zero up to about 25 now. So we probably outgrew our old office and Ventia kindly sort of offered us to um, come and work and share some space with, with the rest of the team. I guess a big part of what we're trying to do is to upskill young neurodivergent uh, individuals to help them find long-term careers, get some experience, get some skills, uh, and a part of what we're building out is a transition model so that they can go and work with either our clients, uh, such as Ventia. So that means that they can build their confidence um, working outside of ASA's environment. It means that we can have impact across the country a lot quicker than we would if we were sort of relying on our own offices to build this out. I mean, there's, there's obviously the cross collaboration piece, which is that for a lot of the team, we're actually working on projects with 
members of Ventia. So even though we were only uh, up the road, um, we're now just across a couple of desks. So being able to sort of get that knowledge, get that training, get that support sort of firsthand is gonna be a, a big benefit to everybody. And another part of that is just not constricting ourselves to just working in our own space. Um, so we're gonna be able to sort of benefit from working in a bigger office, meeting new people, and um, sort of building a lot of that soft skills that the, the team are working on as well. Okay, um, so I'm the, the last bit before we go to Q&A, and this is just to um, give a bit of an overview on how you could prepare to work at ASA and what our recruitment processes look like. So we'll go to the next slide. What we look for when we're recruiting are transferable skills, uh, which could be um, focus uh, pattern recognition, attention to detail, maybe you've worked in retail, so therefore you, you have needed to communicate as part of your job. Um, we look for a great attitude. We can't teach a good attitude, so if you come with one, that's um, a big bonus. And then also aptitude, which is that natural ability to learn or apply a certain skill. And by drawing on the autistic strengths that I mentioned before, we find that um, there is often that aptitude there. And I think Keaton said it beautifully, we do not require experience in the work we do. We will train you on the job, provide you learning and development here. So please, um, that is not a barrier to applying at ASA. If you've never worked on computers or in a sort of a design, um, a geospatial or digital engineering field before. Uh, here is an example of a resume from or a cutout from a resume of someone who applied and got the job at ASA. As you can see there, their employment history has nothing to do with the work. Um, but what we looked at is, okay, so they've, um, you know, interacted with people. Again, that's something that we can help you with, but they've handled cash. So there's a bit of responsibility there. Um, they probably had to, you know, do different tasks at different times, so a bit of time management. So as you can see, we're not looking at exactly what you did, but the kind of things that you would have done as a result of that job. Also, they a video game player. Turns out that if you're a gamer, um, you often would have, um, you'd enjoy the kind of work we do or the, the way you think about when you play the game can really apply to, to the work we do as well. So those hobbies and interests, they're really important to list. Um, so, and I guess a, a tip with your resume, and this is, you know, for ASA and other jobs you're applying for, list whatever employment experience you have or volunteer experience. It demonstrates that you can be committed to a schedule and a routine even if it's two or three days a week. And it shows that you've turned up consistently. You know, we make promises to our clients that we'll get work done in a certain time. And so reliability is, is really key. Um, you know, we can teach you how to do the work, but we can't make sure you're getting out of bed each day. So just demonstrating that you, you have worked or even if you've just volunteered, um, that is a great um, thing to, to show. And certainly your hobbies and interests, there can be some um, transferable skills that are evident there. Going to the next one, uh, we do get many applications. So I often get asked, how do we filter through those applications? Uh, we do that in two ways. Uh, when someone uh, gets through to this stage, we send them a computer activity, takes around 45 minutes, and it's a series of mini games um, that help, you know, test you for focus, pattern recognition and speed. And these are the same skills um, that would see you succeed in the work at ASA. Now, we're not looking for, you know, 90%, 100%. We're just looking for, you know, some, I guess, um, you know, a, a certain threshold. And this gives us an indication that, you know, you'd really have that aptitude for the work we do. And we also pair that, so it's not just on the computer activity, with a questionnaire. We recognise that some of the people applying at ASA or ASA may struggle to communicate verbally or you're not confident. So we give a questionnaire as part of our process to allow you to think and process some questions like, why would you want to work at ASA? 
what's your interest in technology and you have an opportunity in your own time to to give responses to that um so that if when you if and when you get to the interview stage if you do clam up a little that's okay we do have your written responses as well and therefore the final stage is an interview we provide you questions 48 hours in advance you can bring your answers in with you that is totally okay and the questions um, are things like, tell us about an activity you enjoy doing. Um, you know, what is your career goals? And you don't have to say it's, I want to be a data analyst. Uh, you can say whatever you like. Um, but it, it's a great opportunity to, to connect and understand what motivates you. And we also ask, and we really, um, we really want to hear your answers when we say, well, what accommodations can we make to help you succeed at work? The most common answer we get is, I'd like to wear noise cancelling headphones. And that is completely okay. If we're not engaged in training, you are welcome to do that. Some people may share they have a bit of light sensitivity or noise sensitivity, and that's okay too. It's very common. So for us, understanding those accommodations help us prepare you for success. Um, so we encourage you to share them, you know, even when you get to to that stage. And if you are unsuccessful, and unfortunately some people are, uh, we do aim to A, let you know, B, provide some feedback, and you are welcome to apply again after six months. And we encourage you to do so if you have not already secured another job. And then how to apply. Uh, so please send your resume to our careers inbox. Um, I believe we will we'll, we'll send a follow-up email after um, this presentation in the next few days. And, and that email address will be listed there as well. That will be constantly um, monitored every few days. And if you are interested in applying, you'll be added to our recruitment talent pool. We don't hire all the time every day of the year, but when we do, we look to our talent pool. So if you'd like to show your interest to work with us, I'd suggest you send your resume there. And you can also follow our social medias um, where we put several of our vacancies as well. And I think that's it from me. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. You weren't quite the last segment before uh, we move into question time. Uh, I just want to briefly talk about um, a work experience program that we're going to launch here in Brisbane uh, in 2024. So there are two types of opportunities, I guess. The first of those is uh, an in-person office tour. So this would suit small groups of neurodivergent students plus a staff member. Similarly, uh, DES consultants, um, and DES providers, if you've got a small group of uh, job seekers that you'd like to bring through, um, then we can certainly arrange that. Uh, that's something I did when I was previously a DES consultant uh, before working here. Uh, and, and it can be great, even if your job seekers or students aren't interested in data analysis, but to show that there are actually options out there um, and to give a bit of inspiration. But more substantially than that, uh, from next year, we're going to offer five-day work experience placements. Initially, these will be open to students in years 11 and 12. Um, we're negotiable on the dates, but we will only have a certain number of opportunities per school term. So um, that will uh, commence in the new year. What will they be doing during that work experience placement? Um, they'll be involved in the daily activity of our teams involved in team meetings, training, office events, and we're actually putting together a package uh, that is a 20 to 25 hour project based on the actual work that our analysts undertake, and it will teach and show the basic skills, and uh, as you can see on the right there, just a couple of snippets from that project. Uh, at the end of the project, you'll actually get something to take away uh, to show the work that you've done. So uh, for those interested in that, uh, we'll be able to provide more information about that uh, as we move into the new year. All right, we'll move now into question time. Um, thank you to those who have asked questions so far and we'll respond to uh, some of those now in the time that we have left. If you have a question that you want to ask, please uh, scan the QR code head over to the uh, question page now and ask that question and uh, we'll try and answer these as we go through. 
Um, I'll start with one here that says, do we host group tours? Um, as I just said, uh, the work experience section there, uh, we certainly do. So please contact us and um, yeah, we'll organize uh, that at a time that is convenient for both you and us. Um, on that, another question that's just come through is work experience only for people at school? Uh, we're going to start with that. We're going to start with uh, people in uh, students in year 11 and 12. We do have plans to broaden that further, uh, but I guess we need to start somewhere first to make sure that it works. Um, so we'll do that first and uh, then we'll expand our offerings after that. Um, I'll, go, I'll go to Sam for this one. Um, the question is, are you friendly to the LGBTQIA plus community? A great question. And yes, we are. Um, to, to be honest, 30% of our team identify with that community, which is reflective of um, statistics uh, outside the workforce. We also have an LGBTQIA plus uh, working group as well. So it's voluntary. Um, people who identify with that community or our allies can attend on a monthly basis. And that's an opportunity um, to connect with others, but also discuss initiatives and ideas um, of, of, and ways that ASA can continue to support um, those uh, within the team and, and the community at large. Sam, while you're still there, um, there's a question here. Is there a probation period for new workers? The probation period uh, is six months. Um, as shared earlier, we do employ everyone as casual. And what we try to do is offer feedback, particularly in your first uh, few months at ASA to help you settle in. Also, we welcome feedback as well. It's a two-way street. Um, and, you know, what we want to ensure is that, um, you know, you're not only set up for success, but you can understand what um, your role and responsibility is and how best you can interact with others within, within a working environment, understanding that may, that may not be something that's very familiar to you. And there are things that occur in a working environment that may be um, strange or not obvious at times. So we do look um, to, to bring that forward to you and our people success officers, um, which I'm sure Seath will explain, are, are really critical to that as well as your managers. Wonderful, thank you. Um, a couple of questions that we'll sort of uh, deal with together here. Um, one is, are the positions we talk about junior data analyst roles? And there's also another question of what type of duties would a junior data analyst do? Um, so um, most people who start with us start as junior data analysts, but we do uh, also recruit um, at levels above that. Sam, you probably have more information than I do on that one. We do. Um, most people who have not worked in GIS or digital engineering before would start as a junior data analyst. There are occasions when people come to us who are also neurodivergent and bring aligned skills. Um, and if we have vacancies as data analysts or lead data analysts, we'd sort of con certainly consider that. Um, so certainly if um, you bring experience already, please highlight that in your application um, and we can go from there. Thank you. I might ask either Keaton or Lily if uh, you would like to respond to what type of duties would a junior data analyst do? Hi, uh, I can certainly shed some light on sort of a day in the life of a junior data analyst. Um, so our junior data analysts are the ones who, who do the project work um, after training. Um, the actual project work itself obviously varies project to project. Um, our my map and Keaton's map looked quite different, so obviously there's quite a different bit of work involved. Um, but we we train you in every single step of the process. Um, so what a, a a day might look like is you'd come in um, and you'd make sure that your workstation is set up. Um, you'd get yourself sorted. We uh, some teams do a, a morning briefing um, where we get to touch base with you and see how you're, you're going for the day. Um, and then you'd go and sit back down at your desk and you'd open up a work order that is assigned to you in whichever way that project assigns work. 
um, and then you'd, you'd start the, the workflow for the day, um, which is, again, project specific. Um, we have uh, team support channels. We've got um, the ability you can ask questions in person, um, whatever you need during the day. Uh, we have lunchtime from 12.15 to 1. Um, but you're also welcome to, to take uh, short breaks here and there. Um, basically, your day can look like what you, you make of it. Um, every analyst out on the floor has their own routines. Um, and that's a really fun thing to learn. For example, I know that one of my analysts will always go and make a coffee at 10 o'clock on the dot um, in his Darth Vader mug, which is really cool. Um, so there, there, there are routines and what your day looks like is really entirely up to you. And we're just here to help you do the work. Um, yeah. In... In, as you sort of progress through the project, some projects have the space for doing peer support and actually helping other people on the team, um, which is really cool as well. But that's entirely voluntary and is not an expected part of the role, just something that you might want to develop into. Thanks, Lily. Uh, there's, there's one here that I might field. Uh, I've been told you have staff called people success staff. What do they do? Um, we do indeed, and that is... Uh, part of my role is as a people success officer. So every analyst, uh, whether they're junior data analysts up to leads and, and even beyond, um, have access to a people support officer uh, for the whole time that they work here at ASA. Now, our role as a people success officer is to look after the well-being of the individuals. So we're not, um, we're not human resources staff. We don't deal with um, the day-to-day -day management with our analysts. Um, we don't um, get involved in disciplinary things or anything like that. Um, we're completely separate to that. So what we're there to do is help coach each individual to be the best person that they can be. So that might be related to uh, work skills. It might be related to home and personal skills. If, they go, if analysts are going through issues outside of work, then we can assist um, while they're going through those issues. We can also then refer to uh, other organisations. We're not counsellors, we're not um, professionals in that uh, regard, but we know where to refer people to uh, if they need that support. Uh, what we also do is we prepare people to uh, move on to whatever their next role will be in their career, uh, whether that's a promotion within ASA, whether it's going into study or whether it's uh, transitioning to a job with another employer. So um, my role is uh, people success officer slash transition officer. So I work with people who might be coming towards the, the back end of their time with ASA and uh, are looking towards that next step of their career. I help them to... Um, make sure that their resume is up to date, um, to make sure they've got interview skills and to help them with that transition to whatever comes next. So we don't want people leaving here eventually uh, and not continuing uh, in a prosperous career. We want to make sure that we're setting you up for success uh, for the rest of your life. So um, having said that, not all analysts will leave ASA eventually. Um, we certainly have some who want to be here for life um, and, um, yeah, it's it's up to you um, what you want to do, but the PSOs are here to support you through that. Uh, another question, let me go through here. Um, I'll lump a couple together for you again, Sam. Um, do we have intakes at certain times of a year? How many people start at once? And then there's another one asking about are we looking... Uh, to employ in Adelaide at the moment? Oh, you'll have to break it down for me again, Seth. Um, but look, <laughs> I'll try and remember. Um, do we employ in certain times of the year? We employ based on, on need and space. Um, so need relates to a project need, um, hence why it's a really good um, thing to put your resume forward at any time because sometimes we'll get a project from a new client. It's like, oh, my goodness, we need to hire, and then we've got names available. Um, and we also hire when someone may leave, which is something that we can't necessarily predict. 
Um, how many do we hire at a time? Typically, it's one uh, between one and four people. Although in Adelaide at the moment, we have just opened the office, so we will be hiring a bigger bunch between six and eight individuals. So if you are in Adelaide or know um, people in Adelaide where a junior data analyst role would um, really suit them, I really encourage you to let them know to send in their resume to uh, the careers uh, inbox. While you're there, Sam, one more uh, for you. What award do the junior data analyst work under? The award is the Private Clerks Award. Wonderful. Uh, is the office at North Quay? Uh, yes, the Brisbane office is based at North Quay. Uh, for those who are familiar uh, with Brisbane history, it's the old B105 Triple M building uh, right on the corner uh, of um, whatever the bridge is that crosses the river here. Um, so, yeah, that's where we're based in Brisbane. Um, I might just do one more now. Uh, and what we will do is we'll respond to these questions in a written form as well. And we'll email that out post this session today. So if there's questions here that we haven't answered, um, we'll make sure that we answer those and send that out in an email to you um, after this. Um, is there any work from home or is it all in the office? Sam, um, I might get you to talk again on our policy there. Uh, so we do encourage in-office work for the first six months, and that's really to enable uh, training, um, the facilitation of training, for you to get comfortable in the work environment and start building relationships over time, and it can take time. After six months, that's when there is an opportunity to negotiate with your manager work from home, and that is based on sort of like the trust and also um, I guess demonstration that wherever you're working you can still undertake the work achieve the outcomes I mean that you'll have support if you are at home um, because our people's success officers are not there with you um, so that's sort of the process we follow and and, you know, some of our team do work maybe one or two days out of their four or five um, from home. But there is a policy with that. So once you do start with us, you can get a greater understanding of, of how that works and what the process is. Wonderful. Thanks, Sam. As I said, we'll leave question time there. However, uh, if you have further questions you want to ask after this session today, then you can still go to that link um, and it will be open for the rest of today. And uh, feel free to ask any further questions there. And as I said, we'll respond to all of those questions uh, in writing and we'll send that out um, to people after this session as well. So just to wrap up this session now, oh, there should have been one more slide there. <laughs> Technical difficulties, thankfully, they've saved themselves to the end. There, uh, there we go, simple as that. We want to thank you all for um, taking time out of your day to be part of this session today. Thank you for the questions that you asked. Um, thank you for taking an interest. Uh, as I said, we'll email you a list of those questions and your responses. We'll uh, also email out a feedback form just with a few questions if you could answer that. This is the first time we've done a session like this. Uh, we have done some in-person um, tours before. And as we said, we hope to do that again as well. So um, if you can provide us feedback on how you feel that this went, um, then that would be great.